Hi there guys, Evans got your mentors and we back again. So guys, in this video, we're gonna be sharing with you guys everything you need to know about technical analysis. We're gonna be going in depth in terms of how to master technical analysis and how to trade analyzing the market from a technical standpoint. This is the course that we've covered so far and today guys, we're gonna be covering technical analysis. Already last week, we covered the introduction phase on the free course and this week, we're gonna be covering everything you need to know about technical analysis. Yes guys, and do understand we're giving you this whole course completely for free. So make sure that you hit the like button the sub button and also share the video one thing that i want to say in this basic video guys is that we don't want to waste time we want to make sure the video goes straight to the point we are here guys because we are people who understand that we come from disadvantaged backgrounds so we are doing this as a giveaway for people who cannot afford to buy training programs that can teach them how to become professional traders i want you to understand that we'll always be authentic we'll always be as real as we can because this is why we're here guys true facts so yeah guys we're sharing this course with you guys completely for free willingly from our side because because we love to help people. We want to help you guys prosper and we want to help you guys become better traders. We want to be able to create a platform with a YouTube channel whereby you guys can study and become better traders at your own pace. So if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to watch our previous lesson. And from this lesson, we're going to be covering technical analysis. And next week, that will be coming our favorite part. And that is obviously day trading strategies. So yes, guys, without any further waste of time, let's go to the video. Evis Gojo Mentor. Hi there, everyone. This is Evis Gojo Mentor. And we are about to start our lesson of technical analysis so when it comes to technical analysis guys we're going to focus on how to trade a lot of people confuse how to trade with how to grow an account so basically the difference between how to trade and how to grow an account is that when you want to know how to trade that will determine your technical analysis skills your trading skills of which is different from how to grow an account to know how to grow an account will require you to have a mindset a psychology of a profitable trader firstly i'm going to start by explaining what is price action so price action is formed by volatility movement which is controlled by buyers and sellers meaning that price action trading is the discipline of making all of your decisions in trading from a clear price chart or a naked chart this implies that there are no lagging fx indicators present except for some moving averages that may help to determine resistance and support areas along with the trend direction as well so basically guys price action is when you're going to analyze on a naked chart or a clear price action chart you're going to have the skill of price action you're going to need this skill of how to analyze we're going to analyze with price action all right so basically when you're wondering why is price action important when it comes to technical analysis that is a question a lot of traders ask themselves firstly i'm going to start by explaining what is technical analysis and how does it go hand in hand with price action so what is technical analysis technical analysis is the framework in which forex traders study price movement this theory stipulates that a trader can look at the historical price movement to determine the current market conditions or potential price movement basically guys this means that if you're a trader you're going to use your past to understand your current and your future okay so theoretically speaking technical analysis is all the current market information reflected in the market in terms of price meaning it's reflected in the markets as price basically what this means is that everything that happens outside the environment of forex traders meaning things that are happening outside what donald trump says the fundamentals of the market those things are reflected in the market in terms of price henceforth price action is all you need to be able to trade forex now what is the next step into understanding how to trade we're going to focus on trends so what is a trend a trend is when price moves in a particular direction over a period of time trends can be long term short term upward downwards and even sideways also known as consolidation trends success with forex is tied to traders ability to identify trends and position themselves for profitable entry and exit points so basically guys in terms of trends i'm gonna show you how important it is to be able to identify your trends and how they're gonna help you spot your entry and exit points okay now let's continue with the slides how to identify trends the most common way to identify trends is using trend lines which connects a series of highs and lows and guys bear in mind as we go along with the lesson i'll show you practical examples of what i mean by this types of trends uptrend downtrend and consolidation trend now let me show you what is the difference between those three 
okay firstly i'm going to start by showing you what is an uptrend so basically guys you're gonna spot an uptrend this is how your uptrend is gonna look like and right here this is how your downtrend is gonna look like and lastly we're gonna have our consolidation trend so as you continue with the lesson i'm gonna show you and i'm gonna explain to you guys what is the difference between these three trends and basically what you need to look forward to in order to understand them all right so i just showed you an uptrend a downtrend and a consolidation trend let's continue with the slide an uptrend is always characterized by higher highs and higher lows when you want to understand an uptrend you're gonna focus on highs let me explain what i mean by that what is an uptrend there's higher lows and higher highs all right hence the main point uptrend so firstly i'm gonna start by drawing my volatility movement which is how the market moves after identifying that you're going to now understand that this is the low part of the trend so this will stand for else and up here is the higher part of the trend so it's gonna represent the h which is high so i did say that in an uptrend we're gonna focus on highs so this would be our higher highs at the top right here and right here would also be our next higher high and this will be our third higher high and down here this will be our higher lows this will be our higher lows down here what do i mean by this why is this called higher highs and why is this one called higher lows so basically guys this point is the higher part of the uptrend hence it's called higher high this is the low part of the uptrend hence it's called higher low so meaning that this high is higher than the previous one but it's still the low part of the trend and this high is higher than the previous one but it's still the low part of the trend here we're going to focus on higher highs this is higher than the previous one and it's the higher part of the trend same goes for these two okay guys hopefully you understand so let's continue with the slide a downtrend is characterized by lower highs and lower lows meaning that in order for us to understand a downtrend we're going to focus on overall lows all right let me show you an illustration of what i mean by that okay so in our downtrend we're gonna have normal volatility of the market in our downtrend the high part will represent the H and the low part will represent the L. However, when it comes to the downtrend, we're going to focus on lows, meaning that we're going to have here a higher low. We're going to have here another higher low. We're going to have here a third high low. And down here, we're going to have lows, right? We're going to have lower lows and here we're going to have lower lows. And here again, we're going to have lower lows. So basically, guys, this is the high part of the trend. Okay, it's the up part. However, each high is lower than the previous one, hence higher lows. And down here, this is the low part of the trend. And each lower is lower than the previous one, hence lower lows. Let's continue with the slide. And lastly we're going to explain what is a consolidation trend a consolidation trend is a sideways pattern of price moving within a limited breadth of trading in which neither buyers nor sellers are in control this period of indecision is a third type of trend in addition to the up and down trend like i said guys this is the last trend okay so this last trend you're going to be able to spot this trend when you're going to analyze so this trend is called a consolidation trend it doesn't have overall bias or overall sales so meaning the market hasn't decided when it's going to go up or going to go down hence it's just consolidating in this small breadth of a trend all right so down here we have our support and up here we have our resistance this would represent our bias and this right here would represent ourselves it doesn't have an overall direction okay guys so hopefully you understand let's continue with the slide i've just explained what are the types of trends that we have let's continue with the slide so we're gonna move on to technical terminologies so basically guys when you're a forex trader you're going to have to learn the terminologies that forex traders use to be able to explain the market okay so firstly we're going to start with what is an impulse move an impulse move is overall direction of a trend 
meaning that an impulse move in a buy trend would be a buy and an impulse move in a sell trend will be a sell hence overall direction of a trend let's continue an impulse move it's more of swing trading swing trading involves taking trades that last a couple of days up to several weeks in order to profit from an anticipated price move swing trading exposes a trader to overnight and weekend risk where their price could gap and open the following session at a substantial different price okay next term is correction pullback retest and retracement basically these four words represent one thing however you can choose as to which one you want to use i will however use correction you can choose to use pullback retest or retracement but i'm going to stick to only correction to not confuse you guys okay so what is a correction a correction is a short-term reversal in a trend okay meaning that it's more of scalping trading when you are scalping trading scalping trading is a popular trading strategy which is characterized by relatively short term periods between opening and closing of a trade these types of trades are usually only held onto for a few minutes to a few hours at the most okay guys meaning that when you're going to enter a correction or a pullback you're not going to swing it you're only going to enter and exit mostly in the same day or few hours i'm gonna show you guys how to spot impulse moves and corrections okay let me show an example of what i mean by this so let's go here so let's say now for instance we have ourselves a buy trend all right in a buy trend we have normal volatility movement of buying and selling right the market is buying and selling and buying okay so after spotting this you're gonna have to ask yourself what is an impulse move for a buy trend and what is a correction for a buy trend firstly guys remember what i said an impulse move is an overall direction of a trend hence it's gonna be our what our buys every time we buy it can be an impulse move you can hold a buy from here up until it reaches up here this can be in terms of weeks you can be exposed to weekend gaps up here and up here hence swing trading there's an impulse move you're gonna swing impulse move those are the overall direction of a trend okay however when you're going to scalp scalping doesn't necessarily last as long as swinging scalping is a correction it's only a short-term position for instance a correction in this buy trend would be sales if you want to enter your cell you're going to have to close your cell down here why because if you miss to close your cell down here the market will continue with your cell and eventually blow your account so it's important guys to know that if you enter a trade how long are you planning to hold that trade okay now let's continue so secondly we're gonna come on support and resistance i've already touched about support and resistance a bit on my consolidation trend okay so now let's continue support and resistance are turning points or reversals in the market these are the key concepts that help traders understand analyze and act on chart patterns in the financial markets okay guys meaning that support and resistance allows forex traders to better understand where to enter and exit trade you're gonna have to understand that support occurs when falling prices stop change direction and begin to rise support is often viewed as flow which is supporting or holding up prices okay let me show you an example so we're gonna use this line here as our support a support is when prices keeps falling down and when it reaches your support it stops to fall changes direction and begins to rise hence it's called a support it's holding the price to go up hence we call it our floor price cannot go below this line hence it's called our support area okay guys let's continue resistance is a price level where rising prices stop change direction and begin to fall resistance is often viewed as a ceiling keeping prices from rising higher okay let me show you an example of what i mean by that let's say for instance we have ourselves a resistant line here so to spot a resistant line basically or a resistant zone is that you're gonna see the market going up however when it reaches your resistant line or resistant zone it's gonna stop change direction and basically begin to fall hence this is called our resistance we're gonna view this as our ceiling guys basically this is gonna stop prices from going any further now let's continue trends in trends 
a lot of people don't know about trends in trends guys i'm gonna show you how important trends in trends are and how to be an overall better trader trading with the trend is the easiest and most statistically reliable edge firstly we are going to use different time frames to apply trends in trends trading method you're gonna have a trend on a bigger time frame and a trend on a smaller time frame in any given time frame multiple trends can be at play there are long term trends and short term trends however we're going to apply reverse pyramid so we're going to start from big time frames and go to small time frames so that you are able to understand how trends in trends work so in order for you guys to be able to understand trends in trends you're gonna know how to apply and how to approach the market using trends in trends let me give an illustration of trends in trends let's say for instance here we have ourselves a downtrend all right we know this is a downtrend however our downtrend would be on a weekly chart all right this would be our weekly time frame we spot that we have a downtrend this is a correction this is an impulse move reason being that i did explain to you guys that an impulse move is an overall direction of a trend. This is a downtrend. Hence, selling is an impulse move and buying is a correction. Okay? You have to know that when you buy, you must know where to enter and where to exit. Now, let me go back to my point. So, after you analyze using the weekly time frame, you're going to now go to a daily time frame. And when you go to a daily time frame, the market is basically going to zoom even deeper. And when you go deeper, you're going to be able to spot even trends inside trends. So, you're going to have basically a buy trend in an overall downtrend. And you're going to have, again, a downtrend. So, basically, guys, this is what we call trends in trends. You're going to have trends inside trends and even in your daily time frames you're gonna see that also again trends inside your daily time frames so basically these trends are gonna be in your four hour time frame so i'm gonna show you how to properly approach and apply this strategy in your market okay let's continue with our lesson how to approach trends in trends firstly you're going to have to determine the main trend the primary trend this one is usually from weekly or daily time frames we're going to use the largest time frames to consider that as our main trends okay this shows us the big picture of the pair we want to trade and it's usually for swing trading after you spot the bigger time frames the main trend you're gonna now go into smaller time frames every time frame has a different trend even if it's the same direction its characteristics will differ such as speed or strength based on the volatility movement you're gonna see this in the charts you're gonna see that when you make a trend on a bigger time frame and when you make a trend on a smaller time frame it is not the same there is no one correct trend in price trend is dependent on the time frame chosen to observe the market usually the larger time frame is used to establish a longer term trend while a shorter time frame is used to spot secondary trends for ideal entries and exits into the market so basically what i mean guys exactly what i said before you're gonna use your smaller time frames to know how to scalp to know when to enter and when to exit the market for perfect analysis and perfect entries all right so now let's continue with the slides after you've identified your main trends, secondly, going to identify your secondary trends, which is your short-term trends. Short-term trading includes scalping and identifying ideal entries and exits into the market. Like I said before, you're going to use your short-term trends for scalping and having ideal, almost perfect entries and exits into the market. Use technical analysis on short-term trends. You will view charts ranging from 15 minutes to 4 hours when spotting your secondary trends. Short-term trends advantage is that you'll have the ability to get quicker performance from the market. And just like that, guys, we finished our slide. I just basically explained to you guys how to trade and how to basically understand how the market works. Now, let's go to the charts and apply all we have learned and see that we understand. Hi there, everyone. This is Evis Gojo Mento. So, on this video, guys, we're going to help you learn on how to approach each trading instrument you're gonna see that in order for you to be profitable you need to be able to read the charts so you're gonna only need three trading tools you're gonna need to spot your levels spot your trends and you're gonna need to spot your entries you're gonna be using these three tools again and again in order to progress on your trading strategies so firstly we're gonna go through each instrument that you see here these are eight trading instruments and we're going to be doing multiple examples so that you guys know on how to approach each trading instrument that you come across. So now let's go to the first one.
So firstly, we have AUDCAD. The first thing you need to do is you need to go to the highest time frame possible. For this one, we want to use the weekly chart. So when you go to the weekly chart, guys, you need to make sure that you are able to identify the relationship of that specific trading instrument. You can see that with AUDCAD, it has the ability to sell for a long time, which also gives us the possibility of it buying for a long time. This is when you firstly start with a trading instrument, you need to identify its relationship and also how it behaves. Once you learn that, that's when you can progress to the next step. Another step you need to do is to identify levels. So in order for you to use these levels, we need four time frames. You need the H4 time frame, you need the H1 time frame, you need the 15 minutes time frame, and you need the 30 minutes time frame. And you can find them here by the side, as you can see. So we're going to quickly go to the four hour time frame and see what can we see further from this trading instrument. So you can see now we have AUDCAD. This is the H4 chart, which is the four hour chart. So we're going to firstly start by identifying the levels. So now you can see that if we look closely here, we can see that we have a nice level at that point and we have another level there, right? So my first aim is I need to be able to spot these levels with ease. At this moment, I'm teaching you guys on how to spot these levels because with time, you're not going to put them in as you're going to be able to see them just with your naked eye. So you're going to firstly start by using this line first. So you're going to see that the most important thing, guys, is you need to work on your foundation. In order for you to progress, you need to make sure you didn't miss any important aspects of your trading. So that is the first step we have identified our levels. So the reason I'm using my levels only at this area that you see here is because the market is currently at this area right here. So I want to make sure that my analysis allows me to be closer to where the market is currently as that is the place that matters the most. So since I've done with the first step, I'm going to now quickly go to the next step, which is trends. The first one was basically identifying levels and the next step will be identifying my trends. So in order to do that, I need to go to my tools, which is right here. So here's my tip for placing your trend. You need to basically come and draw your trend. And for better accuracy, you come again and then you double that line. So. To have even better accuracy, you need to come here and double this one first. I'm drawing the first one there because if I switch to line charts, you can see that the market is respecting this area. Whenever the market approaches levels, it goes up. So we know that this is a nice level. So when I come back here and I try to basically double this one, it's helping me to know that that is the possibility on the next side as well. I'm going to just push it up and find where I can put it nicely. So we see that we are now in a bullish trend. So my next tip is do not force the direction. I can see that I am not forcing any of my trends on the market. I'm just placing and being able to basically read what the market would do next. So at this level, I can see that the market is pushing towards the upside. I can even switch to the line charts. And I can see that I can expect the market to push towards the upside as it's in a bullish momentum. This is the approach you can use. You need to start here and you need to basically continue applying this approach and you're going to see that you're going to progress more effectively, right? You need to basically find your levels, then you need to find your trends, and then the last step will be identifying your entry points. Now, let's go about basically identifying our entry points. I'm going to go to the H1, 30 minutes or 15 minutes chart. If you want to go to the H1 end, let me remove any extra so I can see properly. If you go to the H1 and you don't find an entry, you can go to 30 minutes or as little as 15 minutes chart. I can see that the market is basically behaving in this manner that we see right here. So the first step is to do what? We need to identify what the market is doing. I'm going to come here. This is me trying to identify an entry. As I told you with basically spotting your trends, you need to come here and double your trend and then push to find a nice spot for a trend, right? So what we're doing here, guys, is called trends in trends. You're going to see that in order for you to apply trends in trends, it's going to help you a lot, especially if you want to be able to know how to find your entries. Because the reason you analyze is because you want to identify where you're going to enter. So at this point, we have two entry points. I can see that the market can push towards the upside should it cross this level that we have here. Should the market cross this level, we're going to expect it to push towards the upside. 
and again don't rush yourself guys you're gonna see with time you're gonna be able to read this with ease so nextly my next level of selling will be from here so at this point you have to let the market run you're gonna only wait until the market comes to those areas before you enter any trade because we use these areas in order to enter where there's less risk because that's where we can be a bit more certain. At this point, we're going to let the market wait and see if it plays according to analysis. Should it do that, that's when you can enter a trade. You're going to see that when you do this, you're basically backtesting and seeing if the specific trading instrument is respecting your setup. So currently for AUDCAD, we are done. This is how you're going to be approaching the market on this specific trading instrument. Next, we're going to look at what XAU USD. So, in order for you to trade XAU USD, you know that this trading instrument is a metal. So, this is how metals work. This XAU USD has a very strong buy momentum currently. So, if you're looking at this two years later from now, you must look at what the market is doing. You can see that from now, the market has been buying for a long time, and we need to make sure we don't go against the trend. We need to make sure we are holding buys and not sells because we don't want to go against the market so the first thing that we need to do is identify the relationship of the specific trading instrument and i see that for now you don't have anything more to use apart from seeing that it's pushing towards the upside so i'm basically teaching you guys that everything that you see in forex is a trading instrument that you have to learn on how it behaves you don't have to have a strict approach but you need to have strict rules that you follow your approach on the market is versatile to a point of what is that trading instrument doing but then the rules of entry remain the same those ones they don't change so let's go to the four hour or one hour chart so let's start with the four hour chart we can see in the four hour chart the market is still pushing towards the upside so what can we see here guys we need to make sure we spot first our levels we can see we have a nice level here we have another level here and then we have another level up here that is the first step the next step is to identify our trends so our trends will be in this manner i can see if i push this in here it's giving me a nice bullish momentum and i want to come and double my trend line and push it towards the upside i can see that the market is playing in this level and if you feel like it's not enough you can still tweak it a bit that's what i've been saying guys you don't have to be perfect from your first attempt you need to try which area is better for you in order to find a nice trend i can see if i come here the upside will be more better than the downside and i can now easily identify my levels like this right i'm gonna tweak it just a little bit to make sure it adjusts this to the current market point so i see that now the market is getting ready i'm going to go to one hour chart to see what more can i do to this specific trading instrument so at this moment if you go to the line chart you're going to see that the market is respecting these two zones of hours we can see that it's been pushing towards the upside and then it comes back to the bottom and pushes back up so expecting the market to now push towards this area that we have right here we are basically following the market as we are not leading we want to follow so you're going to see that with time you're going to be able to read this with ease i'm just teaching you guys on how to approach each market because all you need to do is read on how that specific trading instrument operates so currently with this one we are done and the last thing we need to do is to identify our entry points so let's see on how we're going to do that so at this point guys we don't have anything other than a trend line so trend line here is going to help us know that the market has been pushing here this level we can see the market has been pushing here so we're going to expect the market to drop as hard as this trend line that we have here this is called a triangle setup guys a triangle setup works like this it's more of a right angle setup so if i come here i'm going to see that i'm expecting the market to drop as high as the break of the trend forming a right angle triangle so i'm expect the drop to be just as big you're gonna see with time you're gonna learn that this is very effective because if we come here you can see that the market has been playing inside this region you can see that and once it breaks this area once it breaks this uptrending support i'm gonna expect it to drop as low as the specific trend where it starts so with time you're gonna be able to apply this with ease as long as you know about it so you're gonna see usually once this thing is done the market 
reverses. Once the red angle triangle is done, the market reverses. This is your approach and this is your first strategy. As you can see, the market currently is dropping as it's following our setup. So with this trading instrument, we are done. Now let's look at the next one. We have XAUUSD. This one operates a lot more like gold. What we need to do is we need to go to the weekly chart. We need to change to the candlesticks and you can see how this one operates, right? It has the ability to shoot up, go back down and shoot up again. So at this moment, it's been buying a lot. So we need to see that when you look at something and it basically looks like it's something you can master, it means that it needs to be more of a challenge. You need to be more excited when you look at that. You need to know how does this trading instrument operate so that you can have a better feel and a better approach when it comes to it. So I need to see that when I look at the past, I see that the market respects this level that we have here we can see that the market has crossed that level and it's going to our second level this is the levels that we see and with time guys you're going to be able to place these levels with ease you just need to find an area where the market respects a lot we can see if we come here the market respects this area here respects this area here respects this area here and also respect this here here and here we can see even it crossed came back to retest so this is a level that is respected in here at the bottom as well is a level that is respected so that was that's what we need to look at so we know that the market is now playing in this region so let's go to candlesticks and go to our chart so when we go through for our chart you're gonna see that the first thing you need to do guys obviously now you can see it with ease is you need to spot your trend line so i'm gonna do this quickly you can see that the market is touching here and there I'm gonna come back again and expect the market to come back up and push like so. The market is respecting this trend, right? We can see we are in trends and trends, meaning that the market is basically pushing towards the upside, hit the bottom, hit the top, and we're expecting the push towards the downside. Now, let's go to entry levels. How do you find entry levels? This is how you're gonna find entry levels, guys. You're gonna to need to now go to smaller time frame and use a trend line. This is the first strategy you're going to be using, guys. It's called trend line. In order to place trend line perfectly, I'm just going to tweak it and make sure it's supporting more nicely. So we can see that at the moment, we are not looking for sales. We're looking for the market to push towards the upside. The only time we are going to sell this instrument is if it crosses below this level because we can see that we also have a nice strong zone that we have here. These are acting as entry triggers. So the first step is to be able to read the charts with ease, guys. You need to be able to read the charts with ease. As you can see, the market is now pushing towards the upside a bit because it's still respecting the zone that we have here, right? We can see that we are using our trading instruments in order to identify the chart. So don't beat yourself up if you think it's difficult. You're gonna see with time, we're gonna be teaching you progressively in this trading course in order for you to spot these things with ease, you want to be able to effectively use your trading instruments without any struggles. So now let's go to the next instrument. Now we have GBUSD. Firstly, what we need to do, we need to go to the weekly chart. Weekly chart, we can see this one is behaving like this. We just need to see its behavior. We can see it's more of a ranger. Basically, it's going up and down a lot. It doesn't have a specific certain direction. Now it's been pushing towards the downside and we're expecting the market to now go back up towards the upside. Now let's go to a smart time frame and see what can we do with this specific trading instrument. So in terms of finding areas that are like this, you can also use trends on high time frames. Remember guys, this is gonna be the last approach because it's gonna help you know how long you're gonna hold a specific trading instrument. Let's say for example, you wanna do a trend on a weekly chart. I'm gonna firstly come here and then double the trend line. Try to cover the peaks first. So I'm gonna cover the peaks and then I see that with these trend lines, I can also even try to use the one at the top in order to help me identify the better one at the bottom. Right? I told you you don't need to be perfect the first time, you just need to try and read what the market is doing. Now I see here now i have an even better trend we can see that the market is currently pushing towards the downside right we can see the market is playing inside this region that we have here currently as this is now our trading instrument so now we we'll go to the four hour to one hour chart so when we go to the four hour chart we can see that the market is been buying on this bullish momentum what we need to do 
is draw our trend on the current market price so we can see here the market is pushing towards the upside and i'm going to come here and double this trading instrument like so right so what do you guys see here that we talked about lately you can see that the market is crossing our uptrend right the market is trying to cross this uptrend and should it continue crossing this uptrend we're going to continue looking for sales so what do we need now we need to find those nice levels you can see that we have our levels here i'm just basically letting you guys know how to approach the charts as that's the thing you're going to need once you progress with trading these are the tools that you're going to use in order for you to read the charts we're going to teach you how to properly apply the strategies when you continue the course the first step is to know how to approach the charts basically for these trading instruments we are looking for overall sales right we saw that the market is doing what is playing inside this trend which is trends and trends if we go to read the chart we can see that the market is playing inside this trend we can see that it's been pushing towards the upside pushed back up went up pushed back down touched the top came back up touched the top we expect the market to now continue towards the downside so I'm just reading on what this chart is doing. So now let's go quickly to these candlesticks. Now you can see the market is trying to cross the level. I can also try to fix it a bit. I see it has yet indeed crossed. So what is the first approach here? We're gonna see the market. We expect the market to push towards this level here. So there are two things when it gets there. The market can either cross below, should it cross below, we're gonna expect the push towards the downside, or the market can still at this point push towards the upside. But at the current moment, we're looking for it to push towards the downside as that is now our entry trigger the market has crossed that level indicating for us that we want to expect this sell. so when it comes to these levels guys we want the market to sell for the longest as it can be over a period of few weeks but the overall of a cross of a trend we expect what the triangle setup guys we showed you already that the market needs to do some sort of a right angle triangle you're going to see this is the most powerful thing you're going to see at the time of moment as it is very effective right so another thing with the market is once we cross a trend line we expect the market to retest meaning that the market can cross outside come back to retest and push towards the downside so after a cross we expect the retest and a push towards the downside so that's how you're going to approach each chart from now on forth now let's look at euro gdp firstly we go to weekly chart we can see that this trading instrument is also a bit challenging for the eyes for you to look at but it ranges a lot you can see it's been ranging and doesn't have a specific direction however you know that once it hit the top it goes back down when it reaches the bottom it goes back up so we can see from here that the market is basically a ranging market we call this a ranging market for it is ranging you can see it's ranging inside this trading instrument so now we need to go to smart time frames to know on how to approach trading this trading instrument so we'll go to the forward chart what do we need to do first we need to identify our levels so we can see that here we have our levels from the bottom here and we have our levels here this area just you need to just find those areas where the market basically struggles a lot those are areas where you know that the market can change direction you can see the market when it gets to its level it sells cross a bit but it sells 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 when it gets it buys struggling 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 that's when it crossed again but when it comes back up here it sells right we know these are areas that we need to focus on for the market changes direction in those areas even when it came back here again it went back down and show back up so these are areas where the market respects the most you need to know these areas you know for you to basically be able to profit from the market so at the top there we can spot another level here at this level so i'm just going to be using these ones where they're going to be helping me with my current trading instrument so i see these are my current levels and i'm going to now look at what more can i do with this trading instrument so i'm going to go to the one hour chart if you can find anything to do you need to go to the one hour chart and look at what more further can you do with that trading instrument so when i back test guys i want to show you what you can do i can see that the market here crossed this area here 
Don't be stressed if you're not seeing these areas with ease. With time, can be able to identify these levels with ease, guys. You can see that the market has been respecting this area here. We can see that the market was in a bearish trend here. You see the market was selling towards the downside. It was pushing in this bearish trend, which is a selling trend. So now the market is inside this range, right? It's inside this range. You need to know what more fair I can you do with this trading instrument. So in order for this to happen, guys, you saw, you can see that the market was in this area. The market was in this area and it crossed, right? So crossing our bullish trend, we can see that formation once more. We can see that the market only sold for triangle. After the triangle, what did you say we expect? We expect reversals. So the market is now reversing. And we're now waiting for further direction. So at this moment, you're not going to do anything to the trading instrument. You're going to wait for it to give you some confirmations. If you don't have any confirmation, you wait. So you can either buy from here. Once the market crosses the level, that's when you're going to continue with your buys. Or go to the mini charts and see what it's doing. Try to draw your trend lines. You can come here and try to draw our trend lines. You can see our trend lines won't help us much here. You can come here and double it. We're inside this trend, right? The break of the trends was the upside will be an entry point to this level. So for this level, you're going to need to know that you're going to close your trades. That's if you're a scalper. Right, and should you cross above even more, you can expect the market to cross above first, retest, and push up. That's what you're going to expect. But looking at this current moment, the market inside this trend, because it's still inside, you're going to expect the sell to its first. So that's how we're going to be using our trading instruments, guys. Now let's look at the next one. So the first thing we're teaching you guys is being able to read the markets. You're going to be able to look at different charts and be able to see the relationship of the specific trading instrument. You can see this one gets the ability to push towards the side, push back up, push back down, push back up. So we can see that this one has been pushing towards the upside. It has crossed this trend that we see here. You can see it was inside this bearish trend and it has now crossed outside this bearish trend and had a nice retest. You can see the market has been pushing, 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 broke aside, retest and push towards the upside. And it's at the area where the market was currently. So we can expect some reversals if you should. If not, the market will push towards this level and test this highest level that we have here currently. So now let's go to smaller time frames and see what can we do with this specific trading instrument. So if you can see anything, guys, if you're going to smart time frames and you can see anything, you can change two line charts, right? These are line charts. These are instruments that you can use as well. So you can see that the market has been pushing towards the upside here. If it's not working properly for you, you can move it and start over again. So I need to find levels where the market respects the most. So you see the market respects this level a lot. So I just need to come here and double this area. Now you can see the market is respecting this level. So the market is trending, right? It's in a bit of a trend. And when you come here, we have told you guys about levels. We can see that the market has created some levels for us here. And you can place them. These levels help us on how to expect the market to behave. We can see when the market comes to this level, we can expect it to push towards the upside because it's inside this level. Now, when it comes to trends, you can see that the market is inside a small bearish trend. At the bottom of a trend, that's when you can expect the market to push up because trends in trends state that we know that we want to buy at the bottom and sell at the top. So this is how far we're going to look for our buy trend. So you want to make sure you only cater for the possibility that you see. And apart from that, you wait for the market to give you more before you continue. So now let's look at Euro OD. You can see that Euro OD has a very complicated relationship. However, don't let that stop you from doing anything. You can see that from here, it has a top and a bottom. I see that is the area that's respected a bit. 
And apart from that, let me go to the daily chart and see what more can it give us. We can see that it respect that area. So the reason it's squeezing itself is because this push towards the upside is very high. So in order for it to fit, it needs to squeeze here to just show us this push. So we know this one can sometimes act up a bit. It can buy for a long time and sell for a long time. So for you to enter buy, there's something you can eat a lot from. And when it's all something you can eat a lot from. But now, it's still like it has been doing in the past. It's still now back in the range. You know, outside its ranges, it's when it's either going to buy for a long time or sell for a long time. When it goes back inside, you're going to expect it to continue with the range like the past. It's been ranging inside this trend. You see, it's a range, range outside. It's going for a long time. When it's back here, it's ranging again. So let's go to the forward chart. As you can see, guys, we are now at the top expecting the market to push towards the downside why right? because it's a ranging market you can see what it does from this analysis is push back up down up down you see this is what it does so now let's look at this trading instrument you can see in order for us to analyze here we can see if you get this touches the market has crossed this level here now what we need we need our levels you can see there is a nice level here the market is trying to cross that level you can see there's also another level here with time you're going to be spotting these guys with ease don't stress yourself a lot these levels are just going to help you learn or help you spot areas of market reversals where you find like the market might reverse, that's where you can place a level. And with time, you can remove them if you can see them with ease. This is just to help you learn on how to spot these levels with ease. So if you go to the minutes charts, you can see that the market is still trying to push towards the downside. So what do we teach you about the break of a trend, guys? We taught you you're going to expect the market to drop as hard as this trend. Expecting that this can be within a few weeks or days, the market can continue pushing towards the downside like this. It can push, 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 go back down, respecting the break of a trend, right? That's what we're going to be expecting from the specific trading instrument. Lastly, we have USDC chef, right? We can see this one, it goes to this Frank weekly. It has a bit to push up and push down. It's also one of the three instruments that ranges a lot. You can see. If you come here, this is a level that you need to cater for, right? See the level to cater from here, and then another level here at the top. And we also have another level across here. These are just the levels that I see that you're going to need to see for yourself as well, right? Just find levels where you feel like the market reverses. So I feel like here, when the market comes to this level, it reverses, come here, broke, test, went back down. Struggle the bit is an area of confusion. Those areas from here, we know it's going to push until this area of confusion. Then from there, we're going to expect whether it pushes up or crosses and pushes back up. So we don't force direction. We wait and see how the market acts. So at this point, we can see that the market is creating this nice trend. Come here and double towards the downside. You can see. The market was in a bit of a bearish trend that we see here currently. And so if I come here and put this like this, I can even take this and try to double it to make sure it's a bit nicer. So we are now waiting for the market and we want to see what we can do further. Right? Should the market come and cross this level, we're going to push towards the upside until this level here. That's how far we're going to expect the buy. But for as long as the market is inside this trend, and we'll go to the 30 minutes or one hour chart, as long as the market is inside this trend, can you even use it like this? We're going to expect the market to push back up for entries. Right. The market to push a bit towards the downside here in this level. These are just entry points. These are signals of entry. If you want to enter, you can see the market is struggling here. It's indicating for us to sell a bit. And you may sell if you want to, right? After that sell, you're going to wait. And should the market 
cross this level come back here cross and get to this level you already know here it's a clear buy because there's no area of confusion that you see here you're not going to push towards the upside so we trade these levels a lot this is called scalp entries you can trade scalps and you can also trade this high probability trades that may come when there's no confusions when you get to that level so basically you just have to identify how is the relationship with the trade just choose five trading instruments that you're going to stick to and practice over and over and you're going to see with more lessons you're going to have a better understanding on why we did this specific lesson as this is just acting as practice if it's good, your mental signing out. We are on Trading View. We usually going to use Trading View to analyze pairs because you cannot use an MT4 or an MT5 when you want to analyze. So you're gonna use that to trade. This is the best platform when you basically want to analyze. Okay. So as always, when we analyze, we're gonna start from what a weekly time frame. All right. So now let's start. We have ourselves here GBP USD. I'm going to illustrate everything that I just explained in the pdf i'm going to show you guys how to go about understanding trends in trends how to go about applying our impulse move our correction how to basically understand the market how to trade so when you're going to analyze the first thing you need to do you need to go back to where your pair started and understand its movement understand how it moves okay so firstly what do we have we firstly have ourselves here a buy trend how do you spot a buy trend let me show you an example we did say that a buy trend we're gonna first have ourselves a support down here and we're gonna have ourselves a resistant up here this is also known as trend lines you can call this a resistant trend line and you can call this support trend line okay so we did say that how do you spot an uptrend you spot it by higher highs and higher lows so right now what do you see I can already see that I see myself here having higher highs at the top and higher lows at the bottom. The market doesn't move perfectly according to analysis, however it moves. You just have to understand how you're going to use analysis to understand how the market operates. You do not control the market, you only know the direction. This is my resistance. I'll be looking for what? For sales. So my sell. I would have entered here in a weekly time frame and it would have gotten here to a buy time frame. This is just my direction. As you can see, the market didn't move perfectly as I want it to be. However, it moves. I just want to know the direction. You don't control how the market moves. You only know the direction. Let's continue with the lesson. So basically, we did see that the market started with a buy trend. It now secondly had a small downtrend. And then again, it had the longest buy trend. As you can see right here, guys, this was a long buy trend. All right. It started from here. It basically passed here and ended there. When you spot a buy trend, you do know that we have what? Higher highs and higher lows. We're going to call this our, our uptrending resistance. This is a trend line, right? You can also call it a resistant trend line. But its original name is called an uptrending resistance because this is an uptrend and this is a resistance in an uptrend. Hence, an uptrending resistance. And down here, we have ourselves an uptrending support. This is a support in an uptrend. You can call it a support trend line or an uptrending resistance support which is its original name we're gonna have horizontal support and resistant lines so as you know we clearly have horizontal support and resistant lines here these ones are gonna help you to be able to spot where exactly is the market affected all right as you can see right here guys we had ourselves here a resistance which gave us ourselves and the moment it broke our resistant line it retested and made it our support as you can see the market was no longer able to break below hence it became our support and went forward and tested our new resistant line here as you can see we finally had the power to break through our resistant line and test our overall uptrending resistance and as you can see the market has been trying to fake out a lot of times here but it's failing to break out of the trend meaning we are still in our buy trend and this is still our resistance and now it came to retest on our support as you can see it's failing to break below on our double support there is a vertical support and horizontal support which now we know that from a support we're looking for what we're looking for buying opportunities when you look for buying opportunity support we do know that the market we're going to give us our buys however we do not control the market we only know that we're looking for bullish momentum the market made its own bullish direction you don't control how the market moves 
but you know the direction so let's continue with the lesson we're going to basically try to apply our trends in trends while i'll be also teaching you and reminding you what we've just learned about in our pdf all right the market went bullish and it broke through our bullish trend here and made ourselves a strong sell movement here from that point we had ourselves here a consolidation here you see guys this is our consolidation area why the market doesn't have overall buy or overall sell it's just consolidating from the up and the downside all right guys this is what we call a consolidating market and you must know that you can have different areas of price sensitivity however this is a consolidation trend the market didn't have an overall buy and overall sell to enter a buy or a sell in a consolidation trend you must know when to enter and when to exit okay so the market consolidated at this point and it continued on a downtrend so currently we are what we are at a downtrend so after understanding how the market moves we saw that gbp usd basically respects trends you're gonna first apply your basic knowledge to understand who we are and what are we looking for this would be our downtrending resistance guys and from here would be our downtrending support all right the lines don't have to be perfect but you can try to cater for most touches okay you can try to use a different chart to cater for most touches to have clearer analysis you can switch from candlesticks to line chart a line chart can help basically know where to cater your support and resistance lines easier and once you die you can go back to your chart and continue where you left off all right so already from here i can already spot that we have different sensitivity points i can spot that right here we have ourselves a sensitivity area right here okay this was our support the market is failing to break below every time the market tests this point it rises up stops from going down hence it's supporting the price it's our flow so the moment the market broke through our support line it became our resistance okay so we further continue and see where we are i can also spot down here that we have another sensitive area it might be easier for me to spot them because i have experience okay this is a learning curve guys it's gonna be easier for you to identify them as you practice the skill okay so don't beat yourself if it's not easy and again i can see another sensitive area up here now let's go back to candlesticks to see the market clear basically you can use a line chart to easily see where the market stops as you can see right here guys remember i once said that if you're a swing trader you're going to be exposed to what weekly gaps for example let's say you're a swing trader in this pair and you entered your cell here if you entered your cell here in this swing trade and you say you want to hold this cell in a cell trend you're gonna have to know that when you hold this cell you're basically going to be exposed to these weekly gaps all right sometimes they can go against you the market can close here and open with a gap here and continue in this manner you're going to be exposed to these gaps if you're going to apply more swing trading okay this is my primary trend this is my main trend so remember i'm gonna teach you how to apply trends in trends so now let's go to a daily time frame now we've entered our daily time frame all right guys as you can see i'm going to show you how to apply trends in trends and how you can basically know where to enter and where to exit using trends in trends so let's go back to where the trend started as you can see right here guys since the trend started you can spot that there is what we call trends inside these trends this is an overall sell trend from a weekly analysis but i can also spot that in this sell trend we have a small buy trend here this would be a buy trend in a sell trend. This is trends in trends. So basically when you spot trends in trends, guys, it's going to help you how to identify entries. You do know that every trend needs support and resistance lines. You need sensitive areas to see where the market reverses, where to look for buys and sells. Okay. I do see that currently here. I had a bit of a sensitive area. And right here, I had another bit of a sensitive area that would be all my sensitive areas so this is our support line what do you know the support we do know that when you see a support structure we're looking for bullish movement guys remember that when you see a support you look for what bullish movement i want to teach you something important right now i want to teach you guys to be able to have high probability trades and low probability trades for example guys if you enter a buy on a support 
that is a good place to enter a buy but if you have a double confirmation of a support what i mean by that is if you have a horizontal support and a vertical support this buy point here would be a double confirmation for a buy hence it's important for you guys to know where to spot double confirmation of buys where to know that it's highly likely that the market to buy here is where there is double confirmation hence the buy was even stronger okay, let's continue and see how the market moved after spotting our bullish trend we had a breakthrough of our bullish trend here and the market retested and it started to consolidate to the downside we see that secondly we have what we have another downtrend in a downtrend you must be able to know how to spot these trends you must look for where there is a lot of reversals in a small time frame and basically look for these higher highs and higher lows and basically be able to spot them you know how to identify a sell trend and a buy trend for a sell trend we have lower lows which should be our points right here and our lower highs what should you first look for right look for what sensitive areas if you can easily find them like i did on this buy trend here i told you guys if you can see your sensitive areas or you can see your lines perfectly you can go and use a line chart a line chart can be easier for you to be able to identify your sensitive areas as it's more clear okay i see a lot of reversals at this point this will be my first sensitive area and this would be my second sensitive area as you can see right here guys we have spotted our sensitive areas and what do you see we do see that in our bearish trend we enter our cells here and the market push towards the downside we know at a bullish point at a support double confirmation of support you can enter a buy you know that the market would highly likely support that trade and the market will go up to the upside we do not have a resistance to enter ourselves and you go down our support line here can be up until this point basically right so this would also be our support area our resistance support resistance we know from the support we buy resistance we sell and once the market breaks through our support it becomes a resistance as you can see right here the market came here and tested and remember what i said guys when you see a double confirmation that's a clear and a highly likely setup to okay you do know that now when you see a double confirmation of an entry a vertical resistance and also resistance you do know the market will likely give you a strong sell towards the downside okay you must be able to spot where is highly likely the market would support your strategy okay guys so let's continue and spot more trends in trends let's continue with this trend after spotting our downtrend we do see that we again had a small bullish trend here this should have been the buy trend we would have normally expected what a buy here if the market broke through meaning that guys if the market had enough power to break through this resistance it would have then give us our buy as you can see the market failed to break through our resistance which further gave us ourselves to the downside we were in a bullish trend the market failed to complete the set of the trend and stopped here at our nearest sensitive area okay right so we do see that we had our bullish trend here we had our bearish trend here we now have a bullish trend here and we have our bearish trend our bullish trend now let me go to the current market guys and stop wasting time we do see that right here we had a bit of consolidation and down here we're starting to have what a bullish trend we had a double top here the market has been failing to break through that line you already know how to spot your sensitive areas you know that you spot your sensitive areas where the market usually changes direction in a trend as you've seen guys this is basically how you can spot your sensitive areas and i did teach you guys that if it's hard for you to spot your sensitive areas using candlesticks you can just go to a line chart and see it even clearer as you can see right here i can clearly see that this was my resistance and it moved along my support trend line here we had again another sensitive area here which was our resistance and later became our support and here we had a resistance which the market failed which became at this point here let me move this at this point here we had a double confirmation of a cell it didn't touch perfectly but we do know that this was an overall resistance and this was a resistance and this was a resistance it had a double confirmation that's why the market respected that cell and made it very strongly so all right we had 
a vertical resistance we had an uptrending resistance from a daily time frame and again a vertical downtrend resistance on a weekly time frame which is this one i want to teach you how to easily spot your trends and trends let's go back to the candlesticks as you can see right here guys we had a bullish trend downtrend bullish trend was a small downtrend a bullish trend a consolidation trend a buy trend downtrend to the downside we had a bit of a conversation right here let's go to the current market right now guys i'm sure many of you are dying to see how are we going to analyze using trends and trends with the current market okay so i did say that the market would be highly likely to respect a double confirmation of support and resistance so let me cater for this lines perfectly let me use a line chart to see what the market gives me so already seems like the market is starting to turn based on this resistance and not this one all right we have horizontal resistance and a vertical resistance but the market is already turning based on this vertical weekly resistance let me go back to candlesticks we had a vertical horizontal cell and the market pushed strongly towards the downside i see a lot of repetition here i see a lot of repetition i can clearly see that we are what we are in a buy trend so usually guys this buy trend could be the one to break through this overall downtrend okay so i can see that with my daily time frame i only have analysis and not entry and exit points i can already tell that we are looking for what selling opportunities towards the downside i can see that the market respects this point and this point the market will highly likely to reverse because it's been reversing ever since it only broke once but ever since it's been reversing so even now if it starts to sell it might reverse up until this point now let's go in deeper and see what the market has for us in the four hour time frame we have ourselves a bullish trend we do know that in a weekly time frame we're in a bearish trend and on a daily time frame we are on a what a bullish trend however now i want to see where can we spot our entry and exit points in this bullish trend so now when you go to the current market you're gonna see something here guys currently you can see here that we had a bit of what a bit of a small trend here we had a small trend here guys these are trends in a smaller time frame this is how they look like they look very short guys very short not as long as they usually look on a overall time frame all right so this will be our small bearish trend here this will be our small bearish trend here this will be our small bullish trend here this will be our small bullish trend here which respected this sensitive area right here we see that the market was going on a bullish trend however it failed to retest the support area it only retested here and went above okay and we saw that from this point now the market could start by creating a trend you must be able to spot a formation of a trend before it even starts we have ourselves here a reversal here you must be well aware that if you want to enter a cell here you should know that your first exit point should be here right this should be your first exit point guys this should be your first exit point because you have yourself here a trend all right the market can consolidate like this before going to the downside you should look for a trend because the market respect trends guys it can consolidate like this and not give you a clear set to the downside all right and so from this point here guys we can see the market has been failing to break through so basically right now guys i'm teaching you how to make entries this is not a strategy guys this is just how to trade you must know these things by head these are the first beginner lessons that should be in you before you apply any strategy on top all right so this is called a determining trend line as you can see right here guys the market was failing to break through as you can see right here at the past it failed to break through already it failed to break through towards the downside it bounced up here it went back up it came back it bounced again which should have given us our sell and it failed to do that and right now it finally broke through the question is can the market stop here or will it continue towards the downside from this point I'm gonna look for bias, right however you do know that if the market breaks this point here you're gonna look from this point here selling opportunities towards downside meaning that you can use an order from here you can say you can enter a sell here and have a tp here and have a stop loss here this will be your first entry to the downside and from this point you can say you're looking for a buy 
you can enter your buy here and have your stop loss here and have your TP there. The market can go back to the upside and retest here before dropping overall. However, if the market immediately after touching your TP, if it breaks above this line and retests, retest guys, retest this zone here, we are what? Clear for a sell towards the downside and coming back to test this support zone. So that's how you spot entries, guys. You're gonna spot entries on a smaller time frame, guys. Okay, let me remove a lot of these lines. And analysis should only give you an overview of what the market has. I do know that overall, this is what a bearish trend. I already know that there's an overall bearish trend, and I know that entering sales in a bearish trend is in my benefit because my sell it could be at a triple top, guys. It could be at a triple top, it could be from this one and this one it can give me a strongest sell i do know that i have an ability to hold my sell if i'm in a downtrend guys however the market can decide to now that it's tired of this downtrend and it can start from this point to look for what bullish opportunities and retest break over our trend line come retest and give us our overall buys this is what we call probabilities guys when you analyze you must cater probabilities hi there everyone fx got your mentor again guys welcome to the lesson of actually learning how to use trading view so guys trading view is the most important tool that you need to have especially when you're approaching the forex market because it presents all the databases of what happened in the previous years on each different currency as we know the first currency will be the base currency and then the second will be the secondary. However, it is very, very important for you guys to firstly, before proceeding with this lesson, to jump deeper into the link we have below for you to subscribe and invest in yourself with TradingView. It's pretty simple. It has its terms, it has its conditions and also its price list for either a year subscription or a monthly subscription. But what I'm going to say to you guys, it's important to invest with TradingView. So without further waste of time, let's jump to it. So first things first, you just type in tradingview.com. You can use Chrome, you can use Firefox, you can use Microsoft Explorer, any internet access you can have, you can use. So let's jump deeper, TradingView. So it finally loaded. So as you can see, this is the first thing you would actually come across. As you can see, already it's telling you that is basically presenting more of charts. As you can see at the top, we have S&P 500, we have NASDAQ, we have EURUSD, we have crude oil, gold, Bitcoin, dollar index, we have volatility S&P, Brent oil, ETC. And then at the far top, this guys is where you actually can look at people's ideas of what they are looking for in the market. That is why it's written ideas. This is where you get to see different chart analysis from different traders. And then this is where the market actually is presented. In a sense, if you want to see cryptocurrencies, you just click here. Here, its currencies is going to tell you which ones are the majors, which one are the minors, which one are exotics, Americans, Europeans, Asian, Pacific, etc. And then we come to stocks. It's going to firstly say to you large caps. Large caps are actually those biggest stocks that people literally invest in them a lot. And then the top gainers are actually people who are actually making a lot more on stocks and then top losers are people quite slightly still losing a bit in stocks guys so that is what this platform is all about it tells you everything you need to know about the charts and also indices indices as we know we have major world indices which is nasdaq s p 500 which is don jones which is nike fsta um dax index don jones etc guys so this is a way you and can actually just give it a clear look of what you want to see and then features, we know we have gold, crude oil. This is basically minerals, guys, such as gas, silver, platinum, ETC. And then we also have bonds. Bonds are such as what's happening with the current bonds in Europe or to say in USA or Germany or Japan. So you can actually give this a look out. Basically, guys, it will tell you a lot. So screener, you can actually see that you want a stock screener, a forex screener, a cryptocurrency screener. So basically, this guys, if you choose any of this, it's going to help you to see what kind of trader you are. But as you know, guys, us, we only delve deeper because we are Forex traders. So it's all about what? Forex screener. 
This is a streamer. Streamer is basically for the sponsors of Trading View. They normally go stream live and actually just listen to them, podcast, etc. That's how actually this thing happened. And this is the recommended brokers that actually work with Trading View. But however, don't worry about that. We will sort you out once we have proceeded with the lesson. So here is the charts. This is where actually the record of your analysis is kept. So you just gotta click on it and then your charts will show. Okay. So one thing you need to do first, guys, if you click that link, you need to sign up. So how do you sign up? You firstly go on sign in. When you go to sign in, it's going to show you login, sign up, and then you just sign up because you don't have any login details, right? And then it's going to make you choose either to sign up with Google, with your Facebook account, with your Twitter account, with your Yahoo email, your Apple ID, or your LinkedIn link but we normally like registering with our google accounts because it's much more safer so we'd recommend also you register with your google account which is your email so as you can see guys we're gonna literally just say login because we are already have access to trading view right so once you have signed up you know guys we're gonna just say google fill in everything that you need to fill there passwords your email etc it's gonna automatically register you and direct you to the next side of the registered platform of TradingView. So let's just go to login. We click on Google. It literally redirects us to be able to sign in with our Google account. As you can see, it already logged us in with Tabelo02, which is our registered email for the platform of TradingView. So what happens from here? Now, guys, you are finally registered with TradingView and you finally have access to trading view but first things first you would want to explore right you're gonna go to market summary it normally stays here for quite a while right that's to show you how the market is doing just click on currencies and then you go through currencies you'll see the dollar gained momentum the euro usd is selling usd jpy is on neutral gbp usd is selling or usd is selling usd cat is buying so as you can see we have finally registered and all of that so once you have registered it's important for you guys to want to upgrade, right? So if you want to upgrade, you're just going to come here. Upgrading is you literally purchasing a plan. So when you're purchasing a plan, you're going to see we have the basic plan, which is that they don't charge for it, but it literally has minimum tools to use. For an instance, you can put indicators if you use indicators. You can open more than two charts on the window. You, can, you can't you can actually access 10 um, server alerts. The ads are there. The volume of profile indicators is not there. Customer time intervals is not there. Like just a lot, guys. As you can see right here, it's all about the charts that started it all. Worldwide data. Like they just cover simple things that actually when you subscribe to either a pro, a pro plus, or a premium but as you can see these are monthly subscriptions right as these are monthly subscriptions you can either choose to go to annual when you choose to go to annual you can see that per, per year you want to save up 24 us dollars and actually just pay 155 us dollars for the pro package or if you want a pro plus package you can pay 299 dollars and save 60 dollars to get the pro package or you can subscribe for premium to get the maximum the maximum service of trading view you can access everything from their data dwell deeper to them from the news that okay and people don't see them that's the great thing about it you save 120 us dollars you only subscribe with 599 us dollars but however the most important thing we want you guys to subscribe to actually the pro package because for you to be able to continue with this course you need to understand that subscribing to this price plan or to trading view pro it will literally open enough doors for you to be able to use the market's tools or to make your learning journey much more interesting and you're going to experience a lot how to use different things how to use different tools and etc so we would suggest that guys it's a must that you must register with the pro package right now but if you haven't done that yet you can either choose guys whether to pay 14 us dollars per month or you want to subscribe for 155 us dollars per year it is up to you so let's dwell deeper to what the pro package contains we have subscribed for it 
So guys, as you can see, the minute you have registered with TradingView, on the other side, it's gonna write your name and then it's gonna have a tag of a pro subscriber. If we click here, just say profile, it automatically shows, guys, so you can see Andile1998 with the tag of a pro. This means that I've subscribed for the pro package. As we can look closer to it, you're going to see, guys, it's a pro. But when you're not subscribed, it literally doesn't write anything, right? So let's see on account and buy link. So as you can see, they literally charge from my PayPal account every month for me to actually have their plan. As you can see, guys, this is the plan. So I got, I'm just going to go to change plan. When I say change plan, you're going to see I've subscribed for this, guys. You see? I've subscribed for this, which is six months most probably free. Sooner, we'll be moving to a Pro Plus to access a lot more what's happening right here. So then you're going to understand how these things, guys, happen. As you can see, was included in the previous package. Right now, we are here. So they are like $44.00. Get six months free. Thanks. Not interested. But yeah, anyways, guys, I'm not interested. I'm just going to say not interested. As you can see, this is actually what I'm actually subscribed on, the current plan. As you can see, and the pro package is $29 or $30. So it doesn't matter, guys. That's why we prefer this ones because the So we have quite explained that how to actually the price plan works out with trading views. So without further ado, let's jump deeper into charts. You just click where written charts. It's going to automatically direct you to the current chart presented. So you can see right here, guys, we having USD CHF. So you can see we having USD CHF. But before anything further, you need to understand the time is the most important thing, right? You're just going to come here at the top, right? Click there and then just state the minute that you want. Literally, I normally said a month a week a day four hours two hours in an hour 30 and 15 minutes the reason is for a monthly i look for an overall an overall direction but however guys remember these stars are meant for you to say these are my favorites so let's just remove them so that you can see what happens when you click on them these stars actually means favorite so as you can see right now we are on a daily chart there's nothing right there can you see guys it's a daily chart click on the daily chart when i start putting stars at favorite, it automatically puts it right there. And say, let's say it's a daily now. On a daily, it automatically puts it right there. On a four hour, automatically puts it right there. At two hours, it automatically puts it right there. At one hour, it automatically puts it right there. At 30 minutes and at 15 minutes. So now I have my whole chart. I know weekly for overall direction, daily for confirmation, four hour for in trends and trends, Two hours for moderation, one hour for execution, 30 minutes for, for monitoring. So that's how pretty simple it is. So it is, these things are going to help you a lot. Then for just a bonus, we add a month. As you can see now, they appear very easily. You're just going to come here, just say four hours, or you can just come here and say one hour, or you can just say month. It's just going to work in your terms because it listened to you. You have subscribed. You have paid for this, guys. Remember, what you have paid for, you actually owe. So you can just control it over and over and over again. So the tools needed to start using TradingView or the tools that you need to start analyzing charts. Remember right now, we're just familiarizing you with the basics that you actually want to need when starting to look at the charts. Guys, as you can see right here, here it's a platform for cases. Cases literally means the tool that works in hand with your mouse, right? As you can see, we have a dot, we have an arrow, we have an eraser. An eraser works when you have wrong trend lines or you made a mistake. You just click on the eraser and just remove it. But we literally prefer that you guys use a cross. The reason we want you to use a cross is because it helps you to indicate time and actually the price. As we can see right here, this is the price. Here is the time. So if you put it in the middle, you can see right now we are on 1 March 2006 and the price is on the on this side the price is um 49 or seven, just just any but it helps you to determine time and helps you to determine the price so it's most important to use this one and we would recommend that for you guys please use this one as it's going to help you quite a lot so let's just delve, delve deeper into the second tool so the second tool would be the trend line tools the trend line tool this is where this is important guys 
So as you say trend line two, so you click right there, you're gonna see trend line number one. This is the one we use. Just remember, the star on the right hand side is used to say, this is my favorite. This means it's one you're gonna use, you're gonna need it, guys. Literally, you're gonna need it. You see, you're gonna click firstly here, trend lines, and then we're gonna also need a horizontal ray. We're gonna also need a arrow line. As we can see, guys, these are the only things we actually want for this side only reason is they're going to help us to actually cater for a lot of things as you can see the minute you click those stars on the right hand side they literally appear on your screen right here as you can see guys they automatically appear here so that you can have an easy access towards analyzing instead of coming here clicking here to want the horizontal range just draw it you can just come here click it and then just boom it appears right just boom it appears and you just click there boom it appears suddenly maybe if you want to put a trend line on you just put it right there and then you want to put an arrow line on you just put it right there and then it just automatically does what you want so you can see guys it's pretty simple so we are done with the second tools which is trend line tools now we jump to the third one which is GAN and fibonacci tools GAN and fibonacci tools just click right there you just want to see what's important so at the current state, we normally like using Fibonacci right there and there, but not every time. So you're just going to put a star on a Fibonacci only. Star on a Fibonacci only, as we can see, automatically it appears here. You can just put it right there, drag it from here, and boom, it actually makes us see the overall. You can see that. So we come back to the fourth tools, which are the geometric shapes. So number one, we're gonna need a brush. The reason we're gonna need a brush, the brush we use it for forecasting. For instance, if we have a push, if you're gonna say a brush, a push to the downside, consolidation, market nature, and then continuation to the downside. So that is what we're gonna need a brush for, to actually forecast on the markets. So let's get back to it. We're gonna need a rectangle for zones, meaning a support zone or a resistance zone. And we're gonna also need a triangle for for symmetric triangles or ascending type natures or following the shape strategy. So that's what's important. We're gonna also use a triangle. And then that is it for this side, guys. That is it for the fourth tools we need, which is the geometric shapes. And then we're done by that point. So we're gonna firstly focus, we're gonna now jump into a different one. We're gonna jump to the fifth one, which is annotating tools. Annotating tools is literally your types um of um way to text on the charts so normally we like using a call out not literally a lot but you just use a call out the reason a call out is very very simple is because you can just put it right there and then you just drag it sorry about that the reason why a call out is important you're just gonna put it right there and then you're gonna just say maybe let's just say bullish market bullish market oh right as you can see, automatically it writes right there. And then we can say maybe from this point, we were looking for prices to buy. So for any time you're going to go back to your charts on USD Swiss franc, you're going to actually see that you're looking for buys. It reminds you, that is why you call it a call out. It's an alert that what you're looking for. So that's what's important about it. But let's remove it. Let's now go to the sixth, sixth tools, which are patterns. These are actually the tools of how to identify patterns. As you can see, if we click on it, you use the ABC pattern, you're going to actually get it right there. The cipher pattern, ABCD pattern, triangle pattern, three digit. So guys, we don't actually use a lot on these patterns. We're just going to add to favorite a head and shoulders. We're just going to start it to add it on head and shoulders. And also, um, we can also use an Elliott way for correction faces to actually identify our correction faces. That's going to help us quite a lot. So you can add there. As you can see, if you click right here, we can have our head and shoulders. So let me just look at a bit, a bit of price. As you can see, this is what's the left shoulder, the neckline, the head, the right shoulder. Um, sorry about that. The right shoulder, there it is. And then the market dropped, right? So you can see that's a head and shoulder. And then for the ABCD, we could say from here to there, from here today and then you can see guys it's a z line so this is literally helps you to identify corrections or the market movement so we're gonna use that quite a lot so this is when you can see now guys instead of clicking on it 
and actually deleting it, I could just come back here to the cases to actually choose an eraser and then just click on it, it automatically disappears. So you can see, boom, gone. So the most important also, star the eraser so that it can always be there for you not to struggle and go back here to want to use it and everything like that. And also star the cross here. So it's going to help you quite a lot also, guys. So as you can click right there, so you can see it's, now everything is becomes accessible, right? And then from that point, we go to the prediction and measurement tools. These guys are the most important tool to determine how you measure the market or how you actually predict the market. So you're just going to click on it. As you click on it, you're going to see long positions for buyers. You're just going to start that. Uh, short position for sales. You're just going to start that. And then we like actually using the bar pattern. The bar pattern literally is one tool that allows you to copy a price, to analyze it without looking it at its future. We normally use this when we are back testing. So you're going to see the importance. Of, we're going to just start the long position, the short position, and also the bar pattern. And let's see what am I leaving behind. Um, there is nothing so far. So you can just put in the focus and just see. It's most important. As you can see, guys, success. This is also one of the tools, but we don't literally like using this one. So let's just remove it. So as you can see, now we have chosen all the tools we're going to need to start analyzing the markets. Now, let's put them all in place. So right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 15 tools we're going to need for the overall market or for the overall learning journey of ours. So let's see, what do you start with first before you actually look at the charts? You start first with the zones, right? So we're going to put this as first and then maybe some use rays. So as me, I, <clears throat> as me, I use rays also. So we're going to put a ray line here. So from drawing zones, what do we use? We want a trend line, right? From drawing zones, we're going to now jump to trend line. So already trend lines is number three. So if trends is number three, number four needs to be forecasting. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? We're going to use a paintbrush for that. So we're going to put it as number four for us to be able to see what are we looking for. So first things first, it's zones, which is two tools, which is a ray line or a zone. And then after it's a trend line, which is actually one that's going to identify whether we're in a bull market or maybe we're in a bearish market. Then the fourth one will be the brush. The brush is actually going to help you to focus on what you're looking for. What are the anticipations? What is the probability and possibility? So it's going to help you a lot. Once you have determined the probabilities and possibilities, you're going to now use an arrow line to determine the overall direction or the direction you're looking for. And then let's see what are we leaving behind. And then from that point, that is when then we can literally start now to say we are going to move the the sixth one to being position, which is the long position or the short position. As you can see, this is a step, guys. It's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are the first tools you need to always follow every time when you look at the market. For it to make sense, let me just jump deeper into the charts for it to make sense. As you can see right now, guys, we are on Euro USD currency pair. So what we're looking for is actually we need to firstly determine what's number one. Remember what I said. What's number one, guys? Number one is actually the tools of building structures, which is support or resistance. I normally prefer using ray lines, but also I'm going to show a sample of how to use a zone. So this will be my first ray line, which is the previous high, right? This would be my first ray line, which is the previous high. So you can see right there, which is the previous high and then this ray line also for the previous low so you can see for the previous low so now we know we are inside this consolidation channel as you can see if we cater far most break then you can see that this was respected quite a lot guys but let's jump deep into the charts for us to be able to see now we have determined our outer structures which is our overall channel that we're going through inside here as you can see the consolidation channel so let's dwell deeper to a daily chart. Remember, guys, you don't have to use all of these on one time frame. You can break them down by using them on different time frames. So it's pretty simple for you to follow the steps. So we have already determined our overall structures. Now it's time to draw our trend lines. So from our trend lines, we can see we have a trend right here. And also we anticipate we have a trend right here, which is respected quite a lot, which is now, guys, it tells us that we are in a bullish market. We are in a bullish channel 
as you can see, every time the market reaches this point, the buyers every time reaches this point itself. So let's dwell deeper. Now we have understood that we are in an overall consolidation channel, but inside that consolidation channel, we have an ascending or to say a bullish market channel. So let's go to a four hour time frame. Remember, guys, you don't have to use these all in once, right? So let's again, we can see a trend, guys. You can see we can cater for here and also cater at the low right there. Remember, guys, this is me teaching you how to use these tools and follow them. So from this current moment, remember I said you need to start with the zones, which you can either use a rectangle or either use a horizontal ray line. Or <clears throat> you can use a horizontal ray line. And then from that point, you draw your trends. We are done drawing trends. Now we jump deeper to the brush. So what's happening? If we click on the brush, we're now focusing on the market. We can see we're literally looking for the market push to the downside consolidate at this current moment it either give us a clear bearish channel for us to go on the lower zone so this is actually where now the arrow line comes so the arrow line comes when you are pointing at the prediction as you can see i had it right there so the market clearly did this at the current moment as you can see the market is quite ranging at the top which is creating an ascending type nature which is the market has a high probability Remember, we're still using a brush right now. The market has a high probability of pushing to the downside, breaking the structure, consolidating, giving us a beautiful, clear, bearish channel for us to go short positions from that retest we're going, we might have right there. But also remember now, the brush is for forecasting. And then if we press the brush again, now we are looking for what? Let's check on the possibility. The possibility is that the market might want to respect this level to want to drop here and then push to the upside again guys push to the upside to respect that for the last time in order to create a three touch identification confirmation for us to get a high probability setup so this will be my possibility but however this is my probability so with that being said now let's focus on what are we looking for as we jump deeper now this is where the eraser comes from as you can see my charts are messy right now i just click on the eraser and then I just tap it on everywhere. It erases everything. Can you see that, guys? It erases everything. So it makes even work simpler because you can just click on them and then they just disappear like that. Now I have my clean chart again. This will help you a lot to understand how these things actually operate time and time and again as you practice. You're going to just click on them because you now automatically know them by head. So we have given an anticipation of what we want. So now it's time to determine the sixth step. So the sixth step is actually looking at the stop loss and overall take profit. So as you can see, we want to go short on this position. This means we're going to click on the short position tool and then just put it right here. And now let's determine again our prediction. So we're saying the market is going to push down, give us a clear consolidation of a channel for, to create a bearish momentum. From this point, that is when now we click on where? On the crosshair here. The crosshair is now going to able to select and then we're going to just put it right there to know that, okay, guys, we're going to be swinging this trade up until that far. And then that is when you use an arrow line again to indicate the, direct, the overall direction we're looking for. This is going to help quite a lot. And then now we have focused on the market, right? Forecasting means looking in the future. So now let's predict how the market might move. As we predict how the market might move, now let's re erase this. It's simple, guys. It gives a clear indication. It's pretty simple. So now let's determine how the market might want to move, right? So this was the previous price that was presented by the market. So this means I can also copy this. You just click here on the bar pattern. Remember the bar's pattern is the one that allows you to copy a price and paste it for forecasting. So we might say the prices might want to repeat what it did by actually copying the price right here. And then dragging it up until maybe this current level is automatically copies the price. You can see, guys, I can move that bit of price. Remember, it's the same now. So you can see impulse correction, continuation, correction, continuation. So I already copied the price. Now let's forecast. Let's see forecasting. You can actually twist this upside down. So this will be my next prediction. As you can see, the market might want to move far most as it moves right here. As you can see, guys, it's been respecting quite this a lot. So it might want to drop. As you can see, the market might want to drop in this type of nature. As I said, it might want to give us that consolidation platform where it's preparing for high selling opportunities 
as you can see right there guys before actually giving us a clear indication to go on the lower side can you see how forecasting is very important it helps you identify the most important zones and guys remember this is not only used on a four hour time frame you can apply it on different time frames depending on what kind of trader you are so as you can see we have already used that and that's quite important to understand that this will help you to actually focus more on the market and actually practice what you want to learn or practice what you want to master so that's it for this currency pair so now let's put it on a different pair so that you can it can make sense also as you can see guys this is gbp usd on a four hour time frame let's dwell deeper to a daily time frame firstly you know we determine our overall zones as you can see this will be my highest high as you can see right this will be my highest high and then this will be my lowest low right so i like make, making everything even and actually to make sense this is my lowest low right there now let's go to a what four hour time frame as you go on the four hour time frame we're going to literally see we have a beautiful channel right there which is also equivalent to what 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 happened right here so as you can see it's a it's a kind of a bullish market also but also this cater for the topest points guys which is here to determine the pure price action so as you can see reading the market right there it actually allows you to actually put trends and trends inside a channel as you can see on overall we have a consolidation channel on a bigger time frame and then we have trends and trends inside a four hour time frame let's go deeper to a one hour time frame so as as we delve deeper to a one hour time frame you're gonna see guys we actually have a clear indication of what's my of what might happen so this is an ascending type channel and actually we had a three touch identification on the upper side of which it allows us to focus as you can see the market might push to the lower zone actually consolidate this type of nature and then give us a clear bearish momentum for us to go short which now it's time to use this thing so guys as you can see i'm not gonna quite explain everything every time i go to these things because guys i've explained them how they work so it's all about how you apply them and then from this current moment i'm gonna look to go short once the market reaches this level as you can see i'm gonna wanna go short as the market reaches this level and then push to the downside up until the market gives me the overall direction i'm anticipating which is that level right there so as you can see this is my market prediction so this means what patience that is when patience is applied so i've quite showed you how to use the basic tools we actually use but let's jump deeper now to the pattern so in patterns as you can see we would say this was our consolidation channel a now as you can see b and c so you can see it was a b and c so it tells us that the market respects this double bottom market respect this double top that is why every time the market reaches this current moment it literally retraces it literally respects you can see every time the market comes at the bottom literally respects as you can see it's quite simple guys once you learn to understand these things it's gonna make quite sense like you're gonna enjoy learning in the market that's why i say to you guys it's important to subscribe with trading view because if you don't have a pro package you won't be able to access such things you need to have a pro package for you to access such things or such tools so let's jump to a different context now of how do we actually look at the pairs we're trading for a week so let's jump to it so guys we are done with the tools part right now now the most important thing is for you to understand that we now to put in our watch list so our watch list will be automatically put by trading view right there but it won't show the whole currency that you were trading so the most important thing is to know how to search right you can just come here and just type nzd usd and then it just shows you the whole nzd usd you just click on any you want it automatically shows and then once it shows you just right click from right clicking guys you're gonna just say add to watch list the minute you say add to watch list it automatically pops down on your watch list that you'll be forecasting so you're just gonna do a lot more let's just say again euro usd euro usd and then you see euro dollar as you can see right there click it right there and it automatically it redirects me to where the euro usd chart is i just right click and just say add to watch list because it's something that i'm going to be looking at quite a lot of times so every time you just right click and say add to watch list it automatically adds them on your watch list 
So naturally, I actually have them already, so I won't be adding them anytime soon. As you can see, I have NZD Frank, NZD USD, NZD CAD, NZD JPY, Euro CAD, Euro Japan, and blah, blah, blah. So you can just focus more on actually adding all of the currency pairs. As you go through the course, just look at them and just see why USD and blah, blah, blah. So you can just add them quite simple as I did the job for you. So the most important thing now, guys, is also to put them in order. The USD pairs need to follow each other. The, 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 the audit pairs need to follow each other. The CAD pairs need to follow each other. The Swiss franc also. The, JPB, the GBP also. The Euros also. So guys, this is going to make you to understand where to look for Euro pairs and where to look for GBP pairs or USD pairs or CAD pairs. So... First things first, before we can actually start analyzing the market, is setting our stuff. Setting our stuff is actually adding symbols on what you're looking for. So, what do you do? You come here on watch list, right? As you come here on watch list, you're going to click on create new list, right? So, for me, my new list is top six. So, the reason it's top six is because this is the topest six I, uh, I look for in a weekly. But for as mentors, we literally just say, come here, create a list. I'm going to create a list with you guys, as you can see. So naming it, I'd say FX Goat Trading, right? This is us mentors saying FX Goat Trading. Then you say save. As you click save, it automatically adds your list right there, right? So now you have created your own list whereby you can just go on a watch list and add everything on your list. This is going to make you not to forget what to look for than actually looking at all pairs that are going to end up confusing you etc so guys it's quite confusing so you just gotta look at what works best for you so this worked best for us to focus on the market so we want to pass it on to you once you have created your own playlist you now it's time to add symbols so what are the symbols the first symbol you need to add you just gotta type probability probability right as you type in probability it won't show. The reason is it's not there on trading view, but you will understand what is it for once the time goes by. And then after typing probability, just say enter. Once you say enter, automatically it puts it right there. So you can see, guys, automatically it has it right there. And then the second one, or to say the second tool, or to say the second list to put in is possibility. Possibility. Ability. You're just gonna go there and just type in possibility you're gonna see that it says no symbol that matches the criteria possibilities are not there you just click enter as you click enter it automatically adds them here guys because these are your own stuff right it's probability is possibility and then the last list to put in is not ready the reason we are saying not ready you're gonna understand very very soon you just say not ready you click enter so now you have created a playlist now these are your titles or to say these are where you're going to put in your list right now let's go on a chart so that it can make sense so guys probability will be a list of the pairs that you're looking for for that day or that week you're going to be looking at the market possibilities are what the possible opportunities for in case the probabilities don't work out for instance if i'm focusing on three currency pairs on probabilities and then they don't work out for me i can also come back to possibilities to utilize the opportunities that were presented for the possibilities right and then they're not ready are actually those pairs that you're looking forward to trade but they're not just ready for your setup right so let's jump deeper to different charts so that it can make sense so for you to jump deeper you're just gonna go on you click on fx go trading and then go back to your watch list click watch list it automatically shows the whole pairs you have right there so let's firstly start on USD CAD for samples. So as you can see, USD CAD, let me analyze it. I look, <clears throat> USD CAD is not nice for me right now. USD JPY. Okay, USD JPY, we have already analyzed it. We're just going to go to USD JPY, right click, and then just say add to, add USD JPY to, and then just say add it to FX code trading, which is will be you guys. On your playlist, the name is going to be FX Gold Student. So I'm just gonna click add to FX Gold Trading, and then we go on a different pay, which is AudiCAD. On AudiCAD, you can see, guys. Firstly, you need to analyze for, to determine whether it's a high probability or it's not. So as you can see, we analyze right there. So yeah, it gave us a clear indication. And then from that current level to that point, 
So let's see what's happening. So I'd say it's a also a possibility. So I go to AudiCAD, I right click and then say add AudiCAD to FX Gold Trading. You guys are gonna say add to FX Gold Journey, right? FX Gold Student Journey. Click it, and then let's just have our last two, which is Audi USD. On Audi USD, we're also looking for selling opportunities with a high probability. Let's right click and say add to FX Gold Trading, right? Click and then let's go to GBP USD. As you go to GBP USD, right, left click. And then it's gonna show us analysis. You can see just right click right there and then add GPSD to Forex trading. And then everything is set now. Now, after you have chosen all the pairs you wish to look for, you're just gonna go on watch list, click on watch list again and choose the playlist you created for yourself. Playlist, as you can see, once you click on playlist, automatically those pairs are added here. Now it's time for you to categorize them. Categorizing them means you Put the probabilities on the probabilities, put the possibilities on the possibilities, put the not ready on the not ready. So now it's time to analyze again. So let's go on USDJPY. On USDJPY, this is the daily time frame. As you can see, we have a lower zone, we have an upper zone, and we have trends inside the trend. So it's a drop into a four hour time frame. It quite makes sense and tells us that the market's not yet ready. For as the market's not yet ready, we actually look at what is it currently presenting. As you can see right now, we have an upper structure right there, which is in the formation of a bearish continuation channel right so you can see it's a push it's an exhaustion might continue to the lower side so this means this is a possibility right as you can see it might come break down this level drop consolidate create a, a wedge and then drop so this is what it's a possibility then you just click and hold and put it on possibility boom it's on possibility now right Let's go to AudiCAD. As we have jumped deeper to AudiCAD, you're going to see that also this, guys, this, okay, it's a good trade to take, but however, it seemed not ready without even analyzing it. The reason is it's at the point of confluence, right? You're going to learn about the point, point of confluence once you have mastered um, the course or maybe once you have gotten to the course deeper, right? So you can see right there, guys, so now it's at a point of confluence. So you can see, if we zoom it out, you're going to see it's a point of confluence. So it doesn't quite make sense. So we're going to just leave it because it's now on not ready, right? So we're going to click on Audi USD now. Audi USD seems more of a high probability. As we drop it to a one hour time frame, we might want to go short on this pay, right? So if it's a high probability, we actually set our things up and actually set the execution point and then literally just focus on the market what it's giving us and then look for continuations to the downside, right? So you can see right there, guys, and then just look at the market. It's quite clear, right? So it is quite clear. For us, this is going to be a probability. It's a high probability. This means it's a trade that we need to look for. And then you just click and hold and drag it to probability. Once we have clicked and dragged it to probability, it automatically becomes in a list of probabilities. Now let's go to the last one. So the last one will be GBP USD. As you can see, we have also analyzed this one, but let's go to a four hour time frame to check the overall. As you can see, the overall will be it being on a bullish channel. However, the forecasting, as I, as I told you, use the brush for forecasting. It's gonna tell us it needs to push to the downside, push, exhaust, give us a clear bearish flag before actually dropping to the lower zone. And then this is where we're gonna be looking for our selling opportunities, right? so to go on the lower side so it's a high probability though it's not ready but it becomes more ready when you go to a one hour time frame we can actually capitalize on this trade instead of waiting for it up until to reach that far we would say if it crosses this line we can also enter our short positions right if it crosses that line we can also enter our short positions. remember the tool for selling opportunities is a short position tool so you use it and actually you're going to drag it down to see how long are you anticipating to hold in the markets and things like that, guys. So let's now clean our charts. You go again, as you can see, we have selected an eraser, go on an eraser, you remove everything. Guys, remember, we are pure price action traders. Charts need to be quite clearer. After clicking that, for you to go back to the selecting platform, you need to choose the crosshair um, cursor. And then you drag it right there, guys. And as you can see, you can now move everything quite slightly. So it makes sense. So this will be a high probability. You just also go to GBPSD right there on the watch list, on your watch list. Right click it and hold. 
and drag it to probability, right? Now it becomes more beautiful, right? As so now we have set apart probabilities, possibilities, and not ready. Probabilities are actually what we'll be looking on most of the time. The possibility we're just going to visit to see whether, what did it do for us, right? Because possibilities, guys, it has two types of directions, right? Possibilities is you saying it's not yet ready to go down, but however, it can, it can still push up. You understand? So that's what possibilities was about. You cater for both indications. And then not ready is actually when a pair, it's not ready for your setup. As you can see, guys, we cannot say this is ready for our setup. It broke out of the structure, but however, it's not giving a clear bearish consolidation flag or a continuation flag to say we're going to look for continuations of selling opportunities. This means that it is not yet ready. So you are now able to set apart your probabilities, possibilities, and not ready. Now it's time I make you understand how do we say I need to look at this. There is what we call flags that are used on trading view. As you can see, if you go on the right hand side of the written probability or any pay currency pay, you're going to see if you click here, it shows different colors, right? So for probability, possibility and not ready, we're going to use a purple color. Please use that right now. A purple color in shows you that these are actually list. These are list. And then for high probability trade, you're going to use a red flag. Remember, red means danger. So if something becomes dangerous, you put attention on it. So the reason why you need to put attention on your high probability trades is for you not to miss those trades. So we're going to use a red flag, right? As you can see, now purple is for the list and then red flags are for high probabilities. And then we use orange flags for possibilities. Remember, an orange also forms more of warning or to say attention, you know, it quite makes sense. So you need to focus on that. So as you can see, this is also this is also a, pe a purple and then for not ready we're gonna use a green one guys green is relaxed as you can see green is relaxed you're just gonna choose green and then everything is actually just makes sense right there purple for list which is probability possibility and not ready so as long as you still want to add your list some people prefer saying euro pairs add on that list for euro pairs and then usd pairs add on that list for usd pairs cat pairs just some people prefer doing like that but we prefer doing it like this because the simpler the better so purple flags for list red flags for high probabilities orange flags for possibilities and then green flags for not ready it's pretty simple to use trading view you just gotta understand the clear view of it okay last thing for the trading view lesson guys it's important to subscribe with trading view right now investing in yourself it's very very important it's gonna pay you in the near future trading view allows you to access a lot more data than what's presented in previous years it allows you to even see news guys and also the premium or to say the pro package allows you to have a access free just to use it freely and there's no ads there's no such thing that will disturb you during your chart analysis right and then before I, before we end this lesson, guys, it's also important to know that when we back testing, there's going to be a lesson of how to use the replay button. The replay button is actually you taking prices back. And actually, when you just play them, they literally just play around. As you can see, look right there. You see, they just play. This is used when you back test. You're going to learn how to use the replay button on the back testing lesson. Nonetheless, guys, this is FX Gold, your mentor. And thank you so much. Please, guys. Click the link below right now. Subscribe with TradingView. You can either choose a pro package monthly to pay $14 or either subscribe yearly using $155. Guys, we love you so much. Nonetheless, FS Coach, your mentor, signing out.